It was a normal day, like any other, looting the St. Lawrence Company. Until this guy here approaches us. Now, he's actually an admin. I didn't know this at a time because they're indistinguishable from the St. Lawrence Company. There's no way to tell if they're an admin or not, basically. Eventually, they shoot us. Then he tells us to fix our house. Now, if you've seen my house, it does not need fixing. The roof works fine, the walls hold in the air, and it has a fire pit for heat, so it clearly functions. At this point, we finally ask him for well, why do we need to fix our house? We still don't know that he's an admin, and this is an official demand. He then tells us to add doors and stuff. He also says we're using it for combat, and claims that it's an illegitimate house. Uh, with the very professional claim. Running around with bounty and getting involved with combat is a no-no. But yeah, now that we have their claims, let us review these threats. 1. There's no doors. This one is pretty obvious. Warehouse style is permitted. Nowhere on their entire page does it require doors. It even puts a limit on certain door placements and lockability of place doors. Claim number two. We've been using the house for combat. This is false. The Northwind house hasn't been used for combat unless we were attacked in the vicinity of the house. Maybe he means fighting outside the house, which fighting is not prohibited by Northwind rules. I checked. Claim three. Running around with a bounty and getting involved with combat is a no-no. Put simply, there is no rule in the Northwind Housing Guidebook that ever even uses the word bounty. So claiming this is just made up mumbo jumbo at this time, it might change in the future. The second half says we got involved in combat, which is again not prohibited, and has nothing to do with the house, as I inquired in the previous statement. The best I can think he might mean is he thinks we solely use the house for combat, which is prohibited. However, I've uploaded public footage of me using the house without combat, which means it's not solely used for combat, which means it doesn't qualify for that caveat. Then after the first admin kill with an admin indistinguishable from the St. Lawrence Company, a developer faction, we then see them continuing to camp outside our house, and we move far away, but they continue instigating their chase. Also after he claims our bounty, uh, after he kills us and claims the bounty, we learn that he's an admin where we overhear them talking about the rules here, where he states an airlock is okay. Uh, but we see in the rules, airlocks are prohibited in non-combative houses, which combat house zone currently does not extend across this river, and we are on the other side of the river. So either the pictures are just out of date, or something else I'm not, I don't understand. Then the admin guy, who is still indistinguishable from other players who aren't admins, ambushes us and lays out claim round number two. Oh boy, I can't wait. Uh, his first statement claims nice spawn anchor, implying the house qualifies under the de definition of a respawn house, which means it shows little to no effort. Given how many hours I spent on it, or the amount of display weapons visible, or the many other areas, fire pit room, workshop room, or showroom, not to mention the ridiculously less extensive effort exhibited in many members of the St. Lawrence Company's own homes, that's right, the developer faction's own homes, I've showcased on camera, I find that this in good conscience couldn't really be the reason. Though, I mean, there's always the option that it's not in good conscience, which that's what I'd kind of expect from a St. Lawrence Company member. The other half, nor any purpose in its location other than being respawn anchors, also prohibited. Considering the mine entrance right next to the house shows there is clearly a purpose other than respawn anchoring in the location of the house. After his next threat, he then tells us to fix our house, which he still hasn't explained why we need to fix the house in the first place. One of the things he specified is adding doors, which are fundamentally against a warehouse aesthetic for obvious reasons of a pre-garage shore era. If you wanted to store something that wouldn't fit through a doorway, you would need a wider entrance. Well, that's just uh, overthinking it. It's Northwind. They obviously don't care. Well, we see this own ex aesthetic exhibited in the developer town of James Bay itself. Debunking the first half, he also instructs us to add furniture which we combine with the statement he actually gave another one of our teammates in this fight about the specific part of the attic. So more than an hour after his first threat, before he even revealed he was an admin, we finally have a reason which again, 
I have seen SLC houses with less decoration in their attics than the few decorations in mine. At minimum, this is selective prosecution, where they choose not to prosecute the St. Lawrence Company members. He then claims that if you respawn in your house and then run out for combat, that's bannable. As we've already discussed, there's no rule saying homeowners cannot engage in combat outside of their house if they have used the house's respawn mechanic, though the only real legitimate thing for any of these is that it's entirely based on admin discretion, which is a reoccurring theme. Throughout this whole review of the rules, there have been a bunch of caveats allowing for exception at, guess what, moderator discretion, which is pretty convenient for the St. Lawrence Company, who seems to get very favorable decisions by these moderators when moderator discretion is exercised. Either way, this discrimination is more than enough to, as the Northwind housing rules state, launch any counterattacks, as what a normal homeowner would do, observing this discrimination. After the admin finally tells us his discretion, what the charge is nearly an hour after his first threat, we, we start remodeling the house and spend multiple hours doing so. During this time, we resulted in multiple attacks. I feel obligated to tell you this makes Northern basically Bloxburg the Roblox housing building game. Not only that, in Bloxburg, you don't even have to build according to a fourth party platform that can only be reached from a third party platform that requires a phone number to even access in the first place. But don't worry, it's okay because Roblox allows links to Discord, as long as there are no permitted website links to non-permitted websites. Though don't worry, I'm sure the permitted websites, YouTube, Facebook, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch, are where the fourth party housing regulations per admin discretion are located. Right? Right? But how can this problem be solved for Northwind as a whole? Option 1 is they can simply move the rules to an approved website, like the Northwind official Discord, or any other official website. Option 2, they can move the rules in-game so that everyone can see them and they may actually be able to achieve new players without banning them. Or, finally for option 3, they may become better than Bloxburg and implement their very implementable rules into the mechanics of their game simultaneously allowing Northwind to hire less staff to moderate the rules they could have just put into the game in the first place and had the rules apply themselves. So yeah, that's that's just my thought on this whole housing thing where Northwind admins proceed to tell us things and finally give us a charge after a ridiculously long time. But as a reminder, uh, all of this, I am not a legal advisor and do not and have not offered any legal advice. That disclaimer out of the way, hopefully Northwind will change for the better, considering their developer team has proved questionable. I doubt they're actually going to put that much care into Northwind, but we'll see. This script took forever. If you guys like the, the scripted videos that take forever, let me know. I'll make sure to make more of them. Alright, bye.